everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a lovely day. It's been kind of interesting for me. I had my second COVID shot last week and it made me very, very sick. But by this weekend, especially Sunday, I was feeling quite a bit better. Yesterday was my first full day back to work and so today I'm feeling <laughs> really tired and kind of icky again. Not like I was when I first got the shot, but, but just not normal, not the way I usually am. So I, but I didn't want that to deter me from doing an art video. I normally do a video on Tuesdays. So it seemed like a good plan to go with a 10 minute painting so that it would be fairly quick, but I would still get something done. So one of my favorite subject matters of all time is horses. And in fact, one of my videos on here of a time-lapse horse painting has the most views of my entire channel. So I figured we'll go ahead and do a horse again. Obviously not on par with the time-lapse one since it's just a 10 minute painting, but it was a lot of fun. And I did wind up deciding to then work for about 10, 15 more minutes on it just to get it uh, a little more finished looking. So this is in real time. If you wanna try and follow along, I encourage you to do that. Otherwise, sit back and enjoy. I was really tempted to do a quick pencil underdrawing for this before I delved into the painting, but every other 10 minute painting that I've done, I have not done a underdrawing. So I thought uh, we'll just go with it <laughs> and, and see how it goes. And it did turn out. Uh, decently. I, on any other type of painting, I always recommend having your outline drawing of, wh of whatever you're going to be painting first. It's going to make sure that your proportions are accurate and any mistakes that you make in the drawing, you can fix those before you actually start painting. If you're painting and you realize your proportions are off or that something is kind of wonky, it's much harder to fix once you've already laid the paint down versus if you just have to lightly erase some pencil. So so with any other uh, painting, I recommend an underdrawing, but for these quick 10 minute ones, you just, you can kind of dive in and, and do whatever uh, works for you. So I wanted to lay down kind of like the central focal point, which is the horse's eye, and then just started filling in some color. I'm taking a bunch of liberty with color here and just having fun with it instead of uh, sticking to an accurate palette. It's kind of fun to just play around with many different colors and the way you can make it look still somewhat realistic is as long as the value is even to the actual color. So you could have blue or red instead of the typical brown as long as it's equal to the darkness of the shadow or the lightness of the highlight then you're gonna get a pretty accurate representation. Some alizarin crimson in there. It's a beautiful rosy red type color. And just kind of laying in some of the basic shapes of the horse's face. So you have that sort of jowl cheek with the red there near the eye and then the sort of ears pointing up. And then I'm working on trying to get a decent spot for the nostril. I realized that I didn't quite have that, the forehead in the exact right spot. So I quickly <clears throat> wiped it up, that paint. So here we go. I'm laying in the nostril. And again, this is not 100% accurate because I'm just eyeballing it based on the reference image I'm looking at. And as always, the reference image I'm using is linked in the description. It's from unsplash.com. Copyright free photos that are really beautiful. Uh, but I also like to give the artist credit. Using some ultramarine blue there just to kind of have fun with it and mix it up. Working a little bit of wet into wet there on the bottom part, just letting the colors kind of bleed into each other. But also for some of these kind of outlines and areas, not using a ton of water in the paint 
and also starting out somewhat lightly, except here, <laughs> a lot of water and paint there, but trying to just lightly block in the colors and shapes. And I decided that it would be best instead of just trying to paint the full color of the horse's face, have mostly white with kind of those blocked in areas of shadows. And then to make the horse's head stand out, just have a bright, sharp lined background that delineates the shape of the face. So I love that teal type green, just laying it in nice and easy. Quite a bit of paint, quite a bit of water. And then just really having fun with the mane and kind of going to town with it. <laughs> My, so this is a size four round tip brush that I'm using and it's starting to fray a little bit at the end. So it doesn't come quite to as fine of a point as it used to, even though I try to take really good care of it. When you use something for so long over and over, it, it does tend to wear. So you may need to buy new brushes, but I am able to get some decent thin lines there and just kind of blocking in the shape of the mane flying all over the place as this horse is running. As I said, I'm really just playing around with color. That is cadmium red light. Creates a really beautiful reddish orange hue. Going back over some of those dark areas with some water, helping it flow and bleed out a little more. Adding a little bit of shadow to the other side of the horse's neck, so it gives it a sense of dimension. More hair from the mane. There we go, there's some more shadow. So I lay in some paint and then kind of go back with a damp, clean brush to sort of spread it out. Adding a couple of those sort of hints of shadow from the veins on the face. Oh, well, I started to do that and then I realized, uh, we need to fix these ears a little bit. A little bit of that flyaway bang going on. Here we go. So there's a little bit of that sort of vein shadow in the face in a couple of spots. Again, not a lot of time, but just enough to try and give that horse's face a, a little bit more dimension and personality. Adding a little more detail and darkness to the eye so it stands out. I realized in the photo there's a really nice dark shadow between the the cheek, the sort of chin or jowl, I guess, <laughs> and then and the neck, connecting the head to the neck. So it really added some darkness there. Blocking in some more shadows, details for that mouth. Mm -hmm. 
And then I put a fairly dark line for the, the opening of the mouth itself. And as I stated at the beginning of this video, I did wind up going back. It, I think it was around like 12, 13 more minutes that I worked beyond the initial 10 minutes. And I, I, I cleaned up a couple of spots on, in, on the face. Like that really dark line for the mouth was just a little too cartoonish. So I fixed that up a bit. Notice some of the proportions on the nose and the rounding of the tip of the nose. It wasn't quite accurate. So I fixed it up just a little bit make it look slightly more finished, but filling in kind of those dark, that dark area where the nostril is. And I looked at the clock and realized, ooh, don't have much time left. So <laughs> I think it was right around here, maybe not quite, right around here, I think on the first or second R where I technically, my timer went off and it was 10 minutes, but I went ahead and finished the signature. So ultimately the painting of the horse itself really was about 10 minutes. And then here you can see on the left is where I left it at the end of 10 minutes. And then on the right, I just really played a lot more of the color, added some splashes, and that was the final product. I hope you enjoyed watching that. If you did, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. Until my next video, be kind to yourself, be kind to others. God bless, and I'll see you soon.